Alright everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I've decided to walk you through how I played the showdown, the Lovebird showdown that happened a few days ago. And I'm going to walk you through each of the holes that I played and how I think about each shot and my strategy going into each shot. So on the first hole at Wolf Creek, the first three holes were played here at Wolf Creek. My tee shot, I decided to aim to the right of the flag due to the quite severe wind we have blowing in from the right. And uh, a shot like this will require full backspin, which is what I'm doing over here. And that's because I want the ball to land softly on the green, or at least the plan is to land the ball softly on the green so it doesn't roll too much. We don't want the ball to land the green and kick off. Uh, we want to tr try a putt for eagle. So as you can see, there's where my marker is. There's the flag drifting in the distance over there, visible through the canyons. Right, I've used about 87, 88% power over here because I don't want the ball to... If I use full power, it's definitely going to land here and we don't want that. Right, so I missed the ding just slightly early and that caused the ball to go a lot more left than I planned. Lands here in the rough, kicks across the green and stops somewhere here in the fringe. As you can see, it's rolling on this slope over here, away from the hole. I wasn't too pleased with that, but it is what it is. Decided to use my pitching skills on this particular shot. From the fringe, pitching is very possible. You will notice I didn't use full backspin because what I actually want to do is I want the ball to roll a little bit more. My this club I'm using here is rated at 17 yards, but we're hitting into the wind and 18 yards, so it's already out of reach of this club. However, manipulating the spin can get you more distance out of the shot. You'll also notice that the green is sloping from left to right, player's perspective left to right. So you want the ball to land here and roll towards the pin, setting us up for an easy birdie. Full power and land left of the pin and it rolls towards the pin falling a touch shorter than I wanted but the birdie was not a problem left to right birdie and move on to the next hole right so this par 3 fairly short is playing at about 2.15 and how I get to that number is 73 is about 24, 25 yards. So 240 minus 24, 25 yards leaves us at about 210 or 215. And uh, we're heading into a side wind. So for this shot, I'll be using my four iron, which turned out to be a little bit short once we get going. You'll see I take a four iron, I'll adjust the spin just a slight, slight bit because the way I play I don't like the ball to roll too much so I always give it a little bit of spin and I was quite late on the ding which did not work in my favor Ball lands a little bit short and leaves me with a tricky putt, which unlikely to sink a putt from this distance. As you can see, the green is sloping quite a bit from the left to the right over there. Got to aim far left to allow the green to feed the ball back to hopefully finish close by the pin. Alright, rolled away from the hole a little bit. Easy bird, uh, easy par. Walk away at the par wasn't a bad thing.
Right, final hole. This hole I enjoyed a lot more because it is a longer hole. Long par 4, but due to the wind and drop in elevation, this is a reachable par 4. And what you'll see happening here is I'm aiming to the left. This is to allow the wind to push the ball from left to right towards the flag. The drop in elevation ensures that my driver can reach there. I know from experience that I can get 350, maybe 360 with such a drop in elevation and a tailwind. So I'm aiming very far left to allow the ball to feed back towards the green and uh, hopefully set me up for an eagle putt. Alright, one more look at it. Left of the flag. Let's hit the ball. Full backspin because we want the ball to stop once it lands. Way to grip it and rip it. That's a huge drive! Alright, so the ball landed in this region over here, which is very, very close to the green, but it had a left to right momentum about it, which is why, and the slope over here kicked the ball a little bit to the right. Had I aimed a bit more left, I probably would have landed in the green over here. And that would have left me with an eagle putt, which still would have been difficult. Right, so we left with a 20 yard pitch shot. And you'll notice that the slope is sloping from right to left over here. I'm going to use a 25 yard pitch shot. And want to aim right over here. That's to allow the ball to land and feed, roll towards the hole. Also heading into a side wind. All right, 90% power of 25 is about 22 and a half yards. I added slight yardage because the, because the hole's playing 20. However, I'm heading into the wind, so I wanted to give it a little bit more. All right, and that ball on the dance floor curved around the hole, leaving me with an easy birdie putt. No shame in walking away with a birdie on this hole. Uh, the fact that you can almost reach the green with one shot almost guarantees you a birdie, but on most days you're not going to have an eagle opportunity anyway. So a birdie's probably the best you can do. Alright, so we walked away with two birdies at Wolf Creek, and we move on to Pebble Beach. Now, Pebble Beach first hole, playing 109 yards, minus roughly 9 yards of drop in elevation. So this hole is playing at about 100, however we also have a tailwind. So we don't want to play a full 100 yards of power because it's going to be too long. So the plan here was to get the ball to stop near the hole. Aim right at the flag. This is to allow the wind to bring it back from right to left. But plans don't always go according to plan because you can have all the calculations right in the world but if you don't hit the ding it's not going to work out as you planned and that's exactly what happened here I was too early on the ding that pushed my shot more left now if you look at the carry the carry was 108 yards the hole was playing 109 so my calculations are pretty good That left me with a tricky putt, but once I noticed that the green was a slow speed and I saw that it wasn't doing too much over here, I knew that a birdie was possible. 
slightly left to right if you look at those lines. So I decided to aim just outside the left edge and let the ball drift back into the hole. Knowing that it's a slow speed it's not going to do too much and ended up being a very easy putt. So I walked away with a birdie despite the less than impressive tee shot. Still scored a birdie. Aimed it. Alright, fifth hole in the showdown. Now I see you ready, we've got a tailwind, so I know that I'm gonna get a huge drive here. So we set the tee shot up. Pretty straightforward shot, there's not much calculations that need to happen. The ball's gonna carry about 317. Yep, 317. And roll a little bit more. That's a huge drive! Leaving us with 185 to the pin which I know is going to be a 6 iron because if we have a tailwind 6 irons rated at 180 that tailwind will help the ball carry a little bit more alright the hole's playing at about 187 because we've got 7 feet rise in elevation so 185 plus about 2 yards 187 it is a left to right tailwind so I've added a little bit of backspin just to get the ball to stop a little bit quicker. I don't want it to roll too much once it lands on the green. Maybe aiming left of the flag due to the wind that's going to bring it back. However, I was early on this ding as well. Just marginally early. And that caused the shot to go a little bit more left than planned. And... Uh, finished at 184 in line with the pin which is playing at 185 All right. so once I saw this putt I got a little bit excited thought that an eagle was a guarantee I saw that the green is not doing too much it's a pretty straight putt left to right left to right as you can see here definitely left to right the ball is drifting in from this side going that way for sure this camera angle shows you that these dots over here are moving quite fast in a left to right fashion and when I say left to right I'm talking from the player's perspective so aiming outside left edge was the logical thing to do and uh, it's exactly what I do continue to watch these whole, all these dots this one, this one, this one, this one, this one so I'm going to go back here a touch all these dots one two three four five they're all moving in a left to right fashion so there's no reason to aim anywhere else other than left edge or outside left edge which is exactly what I do expecting the ball to drift back into the hole and the ball travels pretty much dead straight it barely breaks despite all those lines showing left to right Lips the hole and I walk away with the birdie. Should have had an eagle, but it is what it is. Right, final hole, we're hitting into the wind at an uphill target. Fairway is about 15, 16 feet above my feet, which is another 5 yards, so it's playing at about 315 over here. I know that I'm not going to reach 315 because I'm heading into the wind. Just want to land the ball safely on the fairway in this area over here. I don't want it to roll over over here. Right, shot carries 298 and rolls three extra yards, leaving me with an 80 yard wedge shot. The reason I say 80 is because I'm adding a yard due to the four feet rise in elevation. Plus, we're hitting into the wind, so we want to use 84, 85 yards power. 
in a situation like this I will reduce the spin on the shot to allow the ball to fly a little bit further something I did notice with this shot is, I'm just going to go back is that the green is sloping from left to right so as you'll see here push the spin, reduce the spin green is floating from left to right over here so we actually want to land the ball in this region because we know that once it lands it's going to roll towards the flag full power the plan worked out well it lands left of the, f of the flag and drifts just a little bit towards the hole once it lands setting me up for a easy birdie easy relative due to the fact that the screen is left to right it wasn't actually that easy but I still sunk it just aim outside left let the ball use the slope to feed back into the hole And that was three birdies at Pebble Beach. Could have been two birdies plus an eagle. Final three holes were played at Congressional. Alright, so what you see me aiming doing here on the first hole is aiming left of the fairway because I want the ball to drift. It's going to drift from left to right and land in this region here at about 320, 330. You don't want to aim at the center of the fairway because the wind is going to push the ball all the way out to the right. So always compensate by aiming left of the fairway to allow the ball to feed back into the middle of the fairway. Right, you can see the ball drifting left to right. It's going to land in the fairway at 325 and roll an additional. That's a huge drive. 20 yards, making my total uh, 345 yards. Now, this green is reachable on days when the wind is behind you or when there isn't much wind at all. Uh, in this case, I was tempted to go for that piece of fairway over there. Then I was changing my mind. I was indecisive at this point in time. This is the riskier approach because if you were to hit this shot with a three wood, the wind would make it drift. It's going to finish in this region over here, possibly in the sand or in the rough, and you're going to be left with a very difficult approach shot. To the pin. So looking at the different camera angles, Venture decided that my three wood just wasn't going to be enough to get there. So took a safe the safe approach. Five iron, 195 yards. Decided to lay up, leaving me with just under 100 yards to the flag. So this shot's playing at about 98 due to the 4 feet rise in elevation. We're heading into the wind, so we actually want to add a little bit of power because from this angle, hitting across, we are heading into the wind and it's going to take some distance off the ball. So what I'm doing over here is I'm aiming well left at the target for two reasons. The first one is the wind. Second one is the green naturally slopes from left to right. So if your ball lands in this region, we want it to just roll towards the hole.
All right, I was very early on the ding, and that cost me some accuracy. And as you can see, what happened there, as I was anticipating, is landing the ball on a left to right slope. Once the ball lands, it kicks and rolls to the right, which is why I aimed so far left to begin with. However, it still went a lot further than I anticipated. You watch it again here. Ball lands, spins, kicks to the right, and rolls uncomfortably far away from the pin. Wasn't happy with that. And here's where I felt that the shot was rigged because we are dealing with a right to left slope over here. That's obvious. Dealing with T12 green, so we know that the green is quite slippery, it's going to break a lot. Any T12 green breaks a lot um, more than the, the other greens, obviously because of the fact that you did, you're putting on glass almost. And uh, so I decided to aim outside the right here to feed the ball back towards the hole. And you'll see what actually happens here as this ball goes pretty much dead straight. Aiming outside the right because of those slope lines indicating the right to left break. Ball goes straight, doesn't even touch the hole. Have a look at that again. Look at those lines. Watch where the ball goes. Barely breaks at all. Could have had the birdie, but uh, didn't. And that shot you'll see at the end of the tiebreaker actually cost me the match because had I got that birdie, I would have won this match. All right, par three, playing at about 205 yards, hitting into the wind, so I'm going to be playing at about 210, which is my four iron. Aiming right at the flag because the wind is right to left, so I want the ball to feed back towards the hole. My four iron. Slightly early on the ding, and as as you can see, I was punished severely because this ball, despite me aiming right at the flag, this ball is already left of the flag if you had to draw a straight line down here. And it's going to continue to drift more left. Drifting more left. And finishing in a very horrible position. I knew, knew at this point that I was not going to get a birdie here. Now I decided to use about 12 yards power because I'm heading into the wind. I'm heading at a slightly uphill target. So 10 yards plus backspin. I decided to use 12 yards power. And it ended up being too much. Even though I used full backspin to try and stop the ball quickly. Just over 12 yards power. And uh, finished in a very uncomfortable position. However, I was able to save the par by forcing this putt to go straight, using much more power than needed. Didn't want the ball to have any chance of breaking away from the hole. Safe par. Right, final hole. I knew that I was going to be getting a long drive here due to the fact that I have a big tailwind. And... Uh, a lot of fairway to work with. Still want to aim left because the ball's going to feed from left to right and finish the right side of the fairway. That's a huge drop. All right, carry was 358, which is massive. Rolled an extra four yards, so we left with 362, and that leaves us 270 Five. to the flag. Five yards of uphill, so this shot's playing at about 212. And uh, the plan was to get it on the green, 
also didn't work according to plan. So I did put some backspin on the ball because I want the ball to bounce in this region, slow down quickly and hopefully roll onto the green. It didn't happen as planned. This slope over here is a lot more severe than it looks from this angle. So you'll see now what happened is I landed in this region and it rolled and stopped over here somewhere. Because I didn't have much carry, because of the slope, the ball lands over here and it continues to go in this direction over here. wasn't too impressed with that. However, I was able to save the day with this next shot. And I'll quickly talk, talk you through my thinking here. I like to get the ball to stop quickly when I do a pitch shot. And it's only six yards, so you want to use a little bit more power than you need because the backspin will stop the ball quicker than the power you use. So if you use eight yards power and using full backspin is only going to go about six yards. If you use six yards power for a shot like this and you use full backspin it's only going to go four yards. So I decided to aim left of the hole use about 53, 54, 53 percent power left of the hole because of the fact that the wind is going to get the ball just to drift ever so slightly in this direction and power used was 53 percent ball carried four yards and rolled into the hole one more look at that in normal time so could have had a birdie over here and that would have ensured that I won this match now because of that the match went to a tiebreaker So for this tiebreaker we're hitting from the rough. Now my experience has taught me that this rough is not much different from the fairway. So I actually play it the same as I would a fairway shot. We've got a right to left side wind, but slightly tailwind. Four extra yards. This shot is playing at about 154. So I decide to use my eight iron. Aiming well right at the flag due to the wind. Touch a backspin because hitting to an uphill target, and uphill targets tend to roll a little bit more uh, once the ball lands. Downhill targets do the opposite. Downhill targets tend to spin the ball back a little bit more once they land. So in this situation I wanted the ball to land knowing that the wind was going to push the ball ever so slightly and what happened was the shot went a lot shorter carried 140 a lot shorter than I had planned for some reason um, I've played shots like this before and they've worked out a lot more accurate before my opponent managed to get a little bit closer than me, thereby winning the uh, tiebreaker by a few feet. Eight feet. All right, and there you have it. Those were the nine holes I played in the Lovebirds Showdown. And uh, with a score of minus 7, I finished in third position on the leaderboard. 
had I got the birdie and eagle putt that I had I felt that I should have got I would have finished at uh, minus nine and I would have had the outright uh, number one position I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, please like and subscribe to my channel um, your support helps my channel to grow and I would like to continue producing videos like this for everyone to watch and listen to and hopefully you can improve your game by seeing how I play my game. Thanks for watching, see you next time.